Gregory Keane is here, turning the next page of The Dossier on Demetrius. With the Gestapo loot that had motivated the entire affair of Demetrius in the vaults of Barclays Bank, and the trunk he thought contained it waiting for him at Victoria Station, we felt we had the situation pretty well under control. And I suppose you could say, about time, too. We had tried to put ourselves in Dumitrius's position, on the assumption that neither he nor Yachty Bloom would have the nerve nor the temerity to come to Victoria themselves. We had sent men to every messenger service in London. We knew the number of the ticket they had to present to claim the trunk from its stub. The people at the messenger services were to get hold of us the moment anyone appeared, asking them to send a man to Victoria for a cabin trunk. And there the matter rested. We had our lines out, hooked and baited, and almost at once there was a tug on the lines. They were biting. We were on our way. The word came through to headquarters on the embankment. There it is, Keen. Yachty Bloom's just arranged for a messenger from a place in the Strand. Done up as an old grey-haired lady. Yeah. You know, he must fancy himself in the part... Remember when they tried to push Ridgeway under the train in the underground at Hyde Park? Yes, only too well. We could have him picked up. Hmm. A fantastic note of absurdity to introduce. A psychopathic butcher going about London dressed as an old woman. And making the most of it, I have no doubt, by asking constables on the beat to help him across the road. Yeah, that's the thing I've often noticed, Keel. These people, or Demetrius in particular, seem to have a considerable sense of something that could almost be described as humour. Yes, Colonel Fetris, almost. But it wouldn't do to pick up Yachty Bloom just now. What time is the messenger to go for the trunk? Nine sharp tonight. Mm. Do we tell the messenger what's going on or leave him in the dark? Mm, I say we leave him in the dark. You see, if the chap knows what's going on, he could conceivably lose his nerve and show something of our hand. Now, Demetrius is bound to have fellows at Victoria to keep an eye on things. He can still call on Yachty's poles, you know. And we have to keep well in mind, if we miss this time, we'll never get another crack at him. Mm. So it seems to be win or lose tonight, eh? Once Demetrius realizes the trunk's full of forged currencies and paste gems, he'll know that we have the loot and the game's up. He'll have to admit failure. And he'll pull every string he has left to get out of the country. And that's the last we'll see of him here. Yes. Yes, you're quite right, Colonel. Well, that brings us to the problem of keeping that cabin trunk in sight once this messenger has picked it up at Victoria Station. Mm, run over the arrangements you've made for me, will you, Keen? Well, from here, sir, we're using Cutts, Nicholas, Adams and Paulus. Uh, Paulus, incidentally, is the only man known to us or Scotland Yard who can follow a car from ahead of it. He's the chap with that extraordinary ninth or tenth sense you might remember the occasion some months ago. Yes, yes, I'm familiar with Paulus. In addition to that, Frayne at the Yard is detailing 20-odd men, all expert shadows, all the very best chaps he can get hold of. Because it's not only vitally important for us to keep the trunk in sight, we must also prevent Demetrius from knowing it's being followed. Naturally. Now, here's the procedure in detail. I, uh, I rather like myself when we get down to this sort of thing. Could we have that large-scale map from the wall? Mm, yes, surely. Bargain! Yes, sir? Um, before we get well into it, Keen, you uh, care for some tea? <laughs> yes, I thought so. Anyway, we'll have some sent up. We've ten hours before we go over the top. No need to wind ourselves up too tight beforehand. And uh, I'm trying to cut out calling at the club before lunch. <laughs> no sense in letting one's figure go altogether. Yes, yes, now think carefully. At either of the messenger services, Yachty, did you notice anything, anything at all irregular? Nothing, Demetrius. I'm old lady. I'm waiting, wanting a trunk from Victoria. <laughs> I'm helpless. They are saying, here is poor old lady, we'll make it easy for her. As you're absolutely certain, there was nothing, not even the flicker of an eyelid. Nothing? Very well. We can be reasonably sure, then, that Keen knows nothing about the loot, and we'll have plain sailing. After due thought, Yachty, I've decided to use the Shaftesbury Avenue stratagem, whether the trunk is followed or not. The second messenger is meeting the first? Correct. If there is any pursuit after we've claimed the trunk, the substitution should baffle Paul Keen almost beyond endurance. I am there. You are taking me too? Naturally. Our timing must be impeccable, Yachty. The first messenger is getting our trunk at nine sharp. He'll have a taxi waiting, so he should be at the storage place in Shaftesbury Avenue by ten past at the latest. 
And certainly not before five past nine. You follow him closely. Yeah, yeah, he is good. And stop flickering your eyes about like a ferret. As I was saying, the trunk will not be at Shaftesbury Avenue before five minutes past nine, so we'll arrive two minutes past the hour. And that's where you'll come in, Yachty. What we are doing about the attendants in the storage room? Do you think it'd be prudent to leave them to talk about us afterwards, Yachty? Nine. He is not wise, not when it's so easy to... Yes, it's a great pity. It really is. It's extraordinary how often we seem to be compelled to do people violence when all the time we want nothing more but peace and goodwill. And peace and goodwill and a million pounds is all we are wanting, eh, Demetrius? You never fail to amaze me with your flashes of occasional lucidity, Otty. But to resume... We won't be able to use one of your paratroop knives. Why not? It's making no noise. Well, you'll have to put on one of the attendant's uniforms. Do you want to have to wear the tunic after all? <laughs> yeah. We're not using knife. Oh, what's the time? Yes. Take my watch up and um, go up to the wireless room. We want absolutely accurate timing tonight. So set my watch and your own and be careful. Don't drop it. That watch belonged to a German spy permitted British intelligence to catch him. Do you know they didn't even say thank you? <laughs> it's not what you say. Gemutli of them, Demetrius. <laughs> you drop my watch shot and there will be a marked lack of gemutli in the atmosphere surrounding you and I. All right. What are you standing there for? Up to the wireless room, Yachty. You know where it is, don't you? Ah. Eddie, come in. Later. When Yachty's gone. Yachty's going now, and I thought I told you to pay more attention to his feelings. All right, Yachty, run along. I'd be more insistent with Hedy, but unfortunately we can't get away from the fact that aesthetically you are very unsatisfying. That's all. Get out. Yeah, you're liking it better. I'm having plastic surgeon. <laughs> I'm getting new face, Hedy. <laughs> Maybe making me look pretty like Gregory King. Oh, Yachty. <laughs> I'm looking like Major King. <laughs> then we cuddle up, Hedy. <laughs> We're all good friends. All stabbing Hank Kodofsky, Piggy Queen and Eustace Manningly together. <laughs> all right, that'll do, yeah. Yachty, out. Be back here in ten minutes with my watch. The day I set eyes on that creature for the last time will be one of the best days of my life. It gets worse and worse. I swear he takes pleasure in doing the things you keep him for. <laughs> it's the mark of the good craftsman, Hedy. We should appreciate him. See how unwillingly most people work these days? It will soon be over. There are only a few hours, that's what I keep telling myself. Each time the clock ticks, it makes it shorter. Has our enterprise been so very distasteful to you, Hedy? You know how I felt about the murders, one after another. You'll forget the murders when you feel the soft caress of Arctic Fox in the eyes of brigades of admiring Argentinos upon you. There was no need to do what you did to Manley. There is no mercy for the informer, and I won't have you harping on it. It's now two o'clock. It would take five minutes. By ten past nine tonight, we will be in possession of the loot. There is no time to deplore our tactics. They have worked. Not always. In a task such as ours, Hedy, there is no law but expedience. Do you suggest that we could have come this far if Godovsky was alive or Mazzotti? Mazzotti was on the very brink of telling Keen where to find him. I know, I know, I know. And the same applies to the others. They weren't done away with for Yachty's pleasure or anyone else's. They were obstacles to our progress. There was only one way to remove them. Frankly, Hedy, I'm becoming... Bored with a constant necessity to justify our actions to you. You'll benefit as much as anyone else. Either take what we do for granted in future or confine yourself to your cabin. I won't stay locked up from morning till night. Then be content to be decorative or whatever you do. Don't plague me with recriminations at this stage. I'm merely horrified at the way things have shaped themselves. Do you think I don't know what has become of Raffle and Gonski? Raffle and Gonski were the only two poles who knew us for what we are. To the rest of the crew were just passengers. With our departure imminent... They had to go, Hedy. Surely you can see that. Now pull yourself together. The next thing we know, you'll be handing around tracts. Now pour yourself a drink. Where are you going? To the warehouse. I shall only be a few minutes. Wait for me here. I will not wait here. They have seven hours to get word to Keene that they will be at the storehouse in Shaftesbury Avenue tonight. Only seven hours. So it's time I started taking chances. I'm going to the warehouse, too. I can get past the men on the gang drink. He's telephoning someone. I think I can hear him from here. 
I wish to speak to Zalahov at once. Zalahov? Who's that? Zalahov? You know who this is. The moment has struck. I want your plane ready at midnight tonight. I've kept my part of the bargain. None of my people is aware of your existence. They've always thought we were escaping by sea. Just myself, Zalahov. I will be traveling alone at midnight. He will be traveling alone. Alone? So it was for this that I sold him my soul. <laughs> Dimitrius. I sold my soul to Dimitrius. Very well, I shall redeem it. If it costs me my life, tonight Dimitrius will not travel at all. The net was drawing tighter and tighter, and those within it were beginning to get in each other's way. Our plans for following the trunk were flawless. So were Dumitris's plans for getting it. The tension grew by the minute as we waited for the messenger to appear at Victoria. At that stage, there were 62 hours to go. Katie takes her desperate chance in the next suspenseful chapter of Dossier on Demetrius.